Hi, welcome to the PowerPoint podcast. Hi, for our first takeaway, we wanted to talk about why power and greed go hand in hand. We got this from the article from week 11, Power, Greed, and Glory on Wall Street, The Fall of the Lenham Brothers. In the article, we were able to see how the fall of the Lenham Brothers had a lot to do with their greed for money and power and glory. And I wanted to talk about how power and greed go hand in hand. I believe that the more power you have, the more greed you will have you have more you develop more greed for money and for more power and so talking about power i believe there's obviously good things and bad things when it comes to power and i think one of those bad things that comes with having power is that you develop much more greed and i really think you have to be careful with with having power right because it can literally end up being your downfall. I feel like this is what happened with the Lemham brothers. They weren't able to manage the power and the greed that came with it. And then that contributed to their downfall. Hi, everyone. Our second takeaway from the fall of the Lehman brothers that I took away was the status um, that Louis Glucksman put in between him and Peter Peterson. I think the, the, the stigma that the like elite bankers were better than the like kind of the lower educated traders had a large part to play in that. I think um, had Lewis been like more humble and like an understanding, he would have uh, probably made a really good team with him and uh, and Peter Peterson as his co CEO. But from the very start of Lewis bringing on Peter as his co CEO, his uh, original intention was to have him leave and take full control. And I think that plays a lot with the um, the greed and the the status symbol, the power that um, my previous speaker talked about as well. Uh, it's just such a, a bad thing to have in a, in a team, especially like this. And that's why I think uh, Lehman Brothers failed. Our second takeaway is about vanguards and how vanguards of any gender are more negatively impacted than their stereotyped counterparts, according to How Men Get Penalized for Straying from Masculine Norms by David Mayer. Male vanguards are more negatively impacted than their female counterparts for straying from gender norms. Men showing any sort of emotions tend to be frowned upon by society. Whether it be showing vulnerability, be nicer, being empathetic or just crying, this is highly looked down upon by society and the workplace. On top of this, uh, being a feminist or being more feminine has been linked to be uh, or higher sexual assault and just more harassment in general. That's an interesting point because you would think as women uh, that society would want men to show more emotions than just anger because it would be better for everyone, but it just ends up so negatively impacting men in the workplace. Yeah, this uh, gender policing ends up hurting people who are different, and that's something that should probably stop. For week 13, we decided to focus our topic on impression management and the impact it has on your career, as well as impression management of both genders. Impression management is a recurring issue in workplaces, how you control or affect and how people perceive you. It affects how you present yourself as a leader and manager, as well as the scenario, scenarios in which you may find yourself on a regular basis such as reaching an agreement, chair meetings, developing clients, and supplier relationships. The most common reason for impression management in the workplace is to achieve employment at a company or business. Yeah, and I totally completely agree. I also think impression management is used to receive promotions to gain power within an organization, such as using self-promotion, which is trying to show that you're competent, but sometimes you can be showing off too much or even conceited. And then also ingratiation, which is also, you're kind of like sucking up to the people who have more power than you because you want them to like you by giving them compliments and doing favors for them. But the problem with that is you can also come off as insincere and deceitful. But the thing with that is men tend to use it more 
in organizations because it's easier for them to use those skills to gain more power. While women, they feel uncomfortable to use it because it just seems that they don't want to play the organization no game made constructed by men. So continuing on from our guest speaker, Lisa also touched on the part of how women who would use self promo would just seem to be more bragging and not staying in their lane. But it tends to seem that men get more leeway than women using SP. 